Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is a podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. And welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Sarah. It is Tuesday. It is a uh, time for our first author interview of the week. We have two this week, which is always exciting. I hope you had a great weekend. Mine was nice. Um, I did two interviews. Hubby went to Lisbon on Sunday to visit a cousin of his, and uh, unfortunately I was not able to go this time. Hopefully I will get to meet this cousin um, soon, in the next few days. Hopefully. We'll see. Um, but he went to Lisbon, so that means I got plenty of introvert time, and in addition to all the reasons that I needed to stay home and the things I needed to get done. Um, he had a wonderful visit, and... I had a productive day that also involved a nap, which is one of my favorite things in the world. Productive days that also involve naps. There should be more of those. I should put that on my to-do list. Nap. Be productive. (laughs) At any rate, it was a good weekend. We are into another week. It is back to being hot here. Uh, The weather is crazy everywhere. I mean, Southern California. (sighs) Hurricanes or tropical storms and earthquakes and... I, that's just crazy. And then there is a fire not far from my hometown in Montana, literally just a few miles, and they evacuated the town. Thankfully, they were able to save the town, which includes um, this very cool historic old school building. Um, they have lost some outbuildings and um, some structures up further in the mountains that are harder to get to, which unfortunately is always the case with fires like this. But it is a bad. It's bad. I keep... I'm keeping track of the progress on social media, and the pictures are just terrifying. Um, thankfully, everyone I know is safe. I do know people that live in that town. They have evacuated. They are okay. Uh, their house is okay, so that's good. But um, lots of stories coming out of that, and just, it's fire season. I hate fire season. It's awful. Um, but keeping an eye on that, they did get some rain yesterday, which not enough, but it was something. So holding on to that hope. At any rate, I have a returning author joining me today. Um, author Tracy Clark was first on the on the podcast back on episode. Let me double check, uh, just so I give you correct information. Yes, episode three seventeen. Um, when she was on the first time, we talked about her Cast Reigns series, which is a PI series, and now today. So, if you want to go back and listen to that, either before or after you listen to this episode, great. Um, but today, she is here to talk about the first book in a new series that is a series involving Detective Harriet Foster. It is the Detective Harriet Foster series, um, and this is book one. It is called Hide. Let me go ahead and give you that description. When a young red-haired woman is found brutally murdered in downtown Chicago, one detail stands out. The red lipstick encircling her wrists and ankles. Detective Harriet Foster is on the case, even though she's still grieving the sudden death of her partner. As a black woman in a male-dominated department, Foster anticipates a rocky road ahead acclimating to a new team, and building trust with her new partner isn't coming easily. After another victim turns up with the same lipstick markings, Foster suspects she's looking for a serial killer. Through a tip from a psychiatrist, Foster learns about Bodie Morgan, a troubled man with a twisted past and a penchant for pretty young redheads with the bluest eyes. As Foster wades into Morgan's sinister history, the killer continues their gruesome assault on Chicago's streets. In her desperate race to catch the murderer before they strike again, Foster will have to confront the darkest of secrets, including her own. 
So this is Hyde. It is, as I said, the first book in the Harriet Foster series. Uh, you are in luck because the second one comes out in December. So just a few months. So, you know, if you want to read this one now, cool. If you want to wait and read two at once, you don't have to wait very long. Or even if you want to read this one now, you still don't have to wait very long for the second installment, which is always nice when you find a new series that you like. If you are a fan of crime fiction, then you should definitely check this out. I, I like Harriet. She, Oh, she doesn't have it easy. Tracy does not let her characters off easy. She puts them through the ringer. And Harriet has not had it easy. Her partner is, as she's recovering, or she's not recovering, she's dealing with the grief um, from the death of her partner. She's got a lot of other issues going on in her life that you will want to read about. I, of course, don't want to give too much away, but she's been through it. And... You have to wonder at points, is she gonna, is she gonna make it through? Is she gonna be able to keep going with all the things that have happened to her? And so that is, uh, I, the crime fiction for me is, um, interesting and enjoyable, but it's a little bit secondary in this case to, I'm gonna continue the series to solve the murders, but also because I wanna stick with Harriet. I wanna find out just how she's going to get through all of this. There's some glimmers of hope throughout this book as she, you know, starts to come back to herself a little bit, but it's a long road. You can tell it's going to be a long road. It's going to be a a long slog, and I want to see how Tracy and Harriet come through this with Harriet's character. So looking forward to more books. But again, um, let's let Harriet talk more about this book and this series. Again, the book is called Hyde. And it is by Tracy Clark. It is the second in the Detective Foster series. Hi, Tracy. Welcome back to the podcast. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Glad to be I'm here. Happy to have you back and excited to talk about a new series with a new uh, detective that we're getting mm-hmm. to know. Before we do that, though, um, for people who might not have heard the first interview or need a refresher, can you share a little bit about yourself? Well, I am a Chicago writer. I'm, uh, I've certainly got a point where I can sort of say that without sort of feeling sort of weird about it. Um, I live in Chicago, was born here. Uh, I write here. I work here. Uh, and I write crime fiction. So I write the crime uh, novels about uh, strong female characters, African American main characters. And I have two series going. So I've got uh, the first one, which is Cass Rains, who is a private investigator working in the gritty streets of Chicago, and a new series uh, featuring Detective Harriet Foster, who is a homicide detective with the Chicago Police Department, who heads a team of dedicated homicide cops uh, who also work uh, the mean, gritty streets of Chicago. So I sort of have a theme going here. You do, um, but that's, you know, you, you write what you know, right? And you know <laughs> right, Chicago. Right, exactly. You're right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so can you give an overview of this new series? And also the first book is called Hyde. Can you give an overview mm-hmm. of the story? Well, uh, Hyde is about uh, Harriet and her team, as I said, uh, homicide detectives. And when we meet Harriet in Hyde, the first in the series, she is coming off uh, two months of personal leave where something sort of tragic has happened. And she is meeting a new team of detectives, a new station, a uh, new everything. And she's not quite sure she's ready for it, uh, whether she's ready to come back, but she's back. And the first case she has on her docket is a killer who is going around the city, um, killing a young redheaded women and hiding their bodies under things, under Wacker Drive, uh, under a pile of leaves, under things. Uh, and so that's her challenge, uh, this new team, this new place, uh, this old trauma that she's dealing with, and this horrendous case that she's got to solve along with these new people. And we're often running from page one. So she's got all of these challenges, all of these weights on her shoulders, and she's got to figure it all out. So that is Hyde in a nutshell. Uh, it gets sort of gnarly uh, towards the middle, <laughs> you know, but that's the fun for me because I'm the writer. My job is to sort of... uh challenge her at every point to see who she is. And so I do a lot of that in Hyde. So uh, she ultimately, uh, she may or may not be successful, you know, but that's the journey. That's the journey of Harriet. See, I mentioned at the beginning that um, Tracy is not easy on her characters, and Harriet is no exception to that, of course. We are going to take our first break of the podcast, but when we come back, Tracy's going to be talking a little bit more about being hard on the very characters that she creates. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. 
the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my conversation with author Tracy Clark. We are talking about Hyde, which is the first novel in a new series. Let's get back to the interview. And I think we talked about this the last time you were on the podcast that um, you're not easy on your characters. You, you kind I am of not through the ringer and Harriet's no different. She's got some challenges. Right, exactly. I mean, that's how we find out who characters are. I mean, if we just sort of put them on the page and let them sit there and sort of, you know, wander out and, and look at the at the stuff uh, through the window and not do anything, we have absolutely no idea who they are. Right. Uh, we learn who they are by challenging them and sticking them at sort of sensitive places and see what they'll do. Uh, and that's what I do with Harriet. That's what I do with the secondary characters. That's what I do with the bad guys. Things don't go right all the time. I mean, yes. hardly ever. Uh, and that's how we figure out uh, how far they'll go, uh, what they'll do, uh, what they won't do. Uh, and that's how I learn because I don't have an outline. I don't have character sketches. I don't have all of this stuff planned out ahead of time. I just put my characters on the page and then put something weird there to sort of figure out what they'll do with it. So that's how I sort of get by page by page. That's how I get to the end. That's what pantsers do. We're weird that way. And that's how I learn. That's how I learn. And I hope it's interesting for the readers too i love that i just put something weird there and yeah and see what, they'll do. what are you gonna, do? What are you gonna do with that myself, okay you know, <laughs> because we get so wrapped up in books that you have to remind myself these are not real people she's she, they're characters <laughs> they're not real people but you want them to feel real right yeah. uh, you want them to sort of hit the reader and have them invest in what they're doing engage in who they are and sort of feel that they're real so they're book people but they're kind of real people uh, they're just not out in the world where that we live in. Right. Did you have an initial inspiration for starting this series or maybe for Harriet herself? Um, I wanted somebody who had some weight to her. Um, Cass is quite different. Um, she's had a different sort of journey. Um, Harriet has had some serious stuff happen to her. Um, and I wanted to sort of explore a character who is coming into this challenging job, uh, any way you cut it. Um, with some weight. Um, and she's got things she's got to deal with, um, uh, things she hasn't come to terms with. Um, she is brilliant on the job. Uh, she's a wonderful detective, um, insightful, intelligent, empathetic towards the people that she deals with on a daily basis. And when she goes home and takes that badge and that gun off, uh, she's quite a different person because she's sort of in a state of inertia. She's in stasis. Um, her house is not decorated. Um, she's got very little in her refrigerator. Um, there's no paintings on the walls. There's no knickknacks or tchotchkes or anything like that. She lives in a box. And the important thing about where she lives is the location of where she lives. But what's in that box is absolutely nothing but her. And I sort of liked that sort of uh, play of being wonderful here in this area and absolutely lost in the other and then my job as the writer um, is to sort of figure out how to sort of marry these two halves and to sort of put her on a successful path. Uh, she's not quite there in Hyde. Uh, she's not there in the second book in the series, Fall. She's a little further down the path, but she's not quite there. And that's the challenge for me. That's what makes it engaging for me to sort of figure out how to get Harriet uh, to a point where she is living a successful life. And it's that's the interesting part for me. I hope it's the interesting part for readers, too, to sort of follow her along this path to see whether or not she's going to be able to write herself. So, you know, that sort of keeps me going page by page, uh, book by book. Uh, and I hope, uh, you know, at, at a certain point, Harriet sort of, you know, figures it all out and sort of 
do, do as does what we all do, which sort of has to sort of deal with whatever it is we're we're dealing with. You know, you have to sort of sink or swim, uh, succeed or not, uh, and hopefully Harriet will succeed. I hope so. But that's that's also the interesting thing. And if this were a standalone book, you might not have started Harriet in the place that she's at. I don't think so. I think theories exactly. she's got more room and more time to grow and, and figure out everything, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll learn a little bit more about her each book. Uh, she will get further along this journey, hopefully, each book. And so when we sort of get to the end of it, whenever that is, uh, we will have a different Harriet than we in that, that last book than we have in the first. At least that's my hope. Mm-hmm. Do you have an arc in mind for her story or are you just going to keep writing? Well, I just keep writing. I don't have a plan. Uh, I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm not an outliner. I'm a pantser. I pants in everything. Every part of my life is pantsing. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how many books there will be. There will be four at this point. I know for sure. What happens after that, I don't know. I don't know what book, you know, what part of Harriet we're going to catch in each one of those books. Uh, I'll find that when I get there. Uh, but you know, in fall, if she's a little further along, uh, the book that I'm writing now, book three, uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, she's still struggling. She's still struggling, but you know, she's further along. And you know, so it's little, little steps forward, uh, two steps forward, one step back. Um, that's how we all live. That's how real people do it. And that's how my book people do it too. And how about some of your secondary characters? Because she is, she's, um, surrounded by other detectives in mm-hmm. the department and some of them are quite interesting characters. They've got their <laughs> own stories. Uh, yeah. Again, you know, you don't want to give too much away, but do those characters tend to come to you as you're writing or do you have some idea of them? I know you're a pantser, but do you have some idea of them as you start? I don't. Uh, I put uh, characters on the page and put them in scenes and in the rooms. And then I sort of figure out what I need to populate those rooms. Um, I knew in Hyde that Harriet is coming to this new place, a new team, that she was going to have to have a new partner. Uh, and the first partner she, she has is not one that she would probably choose for herself. Uh, and that sort of has some kind of tension to it. Um, towards the end of the book, that shifts. And uh, she has one that sort of um, is a little closer to what she might need. So um, it's sort of interesting for me as I'm writing this to sort of figure out what the new partner has to be in order for Harriet to be what she needs to be. And that's what I'm sort of working with now to sort of define this dynamic between the two of them uh, and to sort of have them complement each other, but not be the same. I don't want them to be like carbon copies of each other. And they're quite different uh, as I'm sort of writing it in the third book. Um, each one, uh, Harriet and, and also Vera Lee um, have, strengths and weaknesses that sort of play on each other. So I kind of like that dynamic. So I'm having a lot of fun writing that. And the team, of course, um, you know, they sort of are, are different people, as all cops are. I mean, you can go into any police station anywhere and you'll find a sort of band of weird O's um, that are just not nothing alike. Uh, they're quite different, but they're all the same, really, because they're all wearing the badge. They're all doing the job. They're all sort of focused on the, on the same thing. So uh, I kind of like that mix. I like having that dynamic. Absolutely. And I'm stealing band of weirdos as my new band name. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got their own personality. They're coming from different places, uh, yes. but they're all doing the same thing. Yes. It is time for our second break of this episode, but seriously, if you had any idea of the number of made-up bands I have created in my head with just wacky, wacky band names, I just, I don't know, I love to pretend to make up bands that never come to fruition, but uh my high school flute playing experience probably isn't the best way to start a band. Maybe. I don't know what that name would be. Anyway, enough. We're going to break. When we come back, we'll be talking about a couple of other points of view from which this story is told. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to build that podcast itch. (laughs) 
whatever it may be. Visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Hopefully during the break you came up with some of your own band names. Um, you know, my band, Band of Weirdos, is, that's accurate on so many levels. But uh, let's go ahead and return now to the interview with Tracy. Now, in addition to Harriet, there's also um, several other points of view throughout the book. And again, with a story like this, you don't want to give a lot away. When you started writing, did you um, just start writing from Harriet's perspective or did you kind of know you wanted to bring in these other points of view? Um, I knew that I wanted to write from Harriet's perspective, but then the other voice popped up. And when it popped up, it popped up in such a strong and sort of a concentrated way that I sort of went with it. Um, again, no outline. Um, so I wrote Harriet's perspective. Uh, this is going to be her story. She's standing on the sidewalk in front of this news station. Not sure whether or not she wants to go in or a uh, run. And she goes in, meets these new people. And then we find what the crime is. And it's done by such a person that was so interesting to me that I had to sort of stop for a bit and sort of figure out who this person was and why they were. And then I sort of started hearing this voice and I started writing from that voice and it got more interesting and darker and more evil. And it was kind of fun. I mean, it's kind of fun to sort of get into that sort of headspace that's from somebody who has absolutely no redeeming value in terms of, you know, taking a life. Most of us are civilized and, and sort of, you know, we sort of know what the rules are. Uh, society sort of expects this from us. And this is a person who sort of doing is doing their own thing and doing it for their own reasons. And it's evil. And I sort of wanted to understand what kind of person that would be, why that person would be, and then sort of sort of live in that head for a while. It was kind of it's kind of interesting. I kind of liked it. Yeah, that's fascinating. I can imagine that my listeners who are pantsers are just listening and nodding along going, yep, that makes sense. And my listeners who are planners right now are just crazy. Cannot imagine it. <laughs> um, but because, because I'm more of a planner than a pantser, my brain goes to, do you ever write yourself into a spot in the story that you think, well, shoot, I'm not sure how to get myself out of this? Every day. Um, mm-hmm. I, actually, I get up at 530 in the morning and write and, and- in fact, about 6.30 this morning, I wrote myself into a corner and I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to get out of it. And I'm going to think about that all day long today until 5.30 tomorrow morning when I have to actually hit this laptop again and figure out where I went wrong, go back, figure it out, uh, and, and then write forward. So that happens to me maybe a million and five times during a course of a book. Uh, but that's kind of how my brain has to do it. I've tried outlining. Um but there's somewhere in there that says once that outline's done, that I'm done. I've written the book. Uh, I don't have to do anything else. Uh, the story is there. It's got a beginning, a middle, and an end. And yet, of course, you haven't written anything. You've just written an outline. And if I'm going to waste that time writing that outline, I may as well, you know, just sort of dive in and write the real thing. Uh, if I get stuck, I get stuck. If I have to go back, I have to go back. And uh, that's kind of how I do it, like a sort of a ball in a pinball machine, back and forth, back and forth. That's my process. Uh, I have to own it at this point. I'm like, what, six and a half books in? Uh, it looks like it's going to stick. Uh, this is, I'm a pantser, uh, and I just have to sort of uh, accept that and deal with it and just do what I do. Actually, you're you're talking about an outline and how that it, that it's done and and then it's done. It reminds me a lot of my grad school roommate who didn't. It's not that she didn't want to make a decision or couldn't make a decision. It's just that once she made a decision, all other options were then negated, and she really liked to keep those options open as long as possible. Uh huh. Yeah. So yeah, it makes sense. How about research? Did you do anything, any research for the book? Particular types of research for the book? Uh, not really. Um, when I got stuck, as I often do, as I said, um, I needed to know a little bit about 
the psychopathy of this bad person. Uh, so I stopped, uh, as I, I do often, and I sort of looked it up a little bit and see, well, what are the characteristics of this kind of person? What are the traits? Uh, what are the, the symptoms of this kind of thing? Uh, and what might have caused this whole thing? So uh, just under surface level, I needed to sort of understand what it was, why it was, uh, what might have caused it. And then, of course, I go back and it's all character. Um, it's not the uh, I'm not writing a psychological book. Uh, this is not some textbook thing. Um, it's entertainment. It's, it's fiction. Um, but I needed to know the background of it so I can sort of flesh this character out and give them some kind of a backstory that might explain uh, why this thing is. So just a little research, just to know what I was sort of talking about a little bit. And then it's all character. It's all fiction. It's all story. It's all plot. It's all book. So just a little, just enough to know, and then move on. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Um, Fall, the second book, comes out, I think, in December. Is there anything mm-hmm. that you can say about that story? Well, uh, we meet Harriet and her team again. Uh, this is book two in this series. Uh, this one, they are finding uh, dead aldermen, uh, politicians here in the city of Chicago, uh, which has a sort of a reputation for being, you know, corrupt. Uh, but anyway, they find these aldermen and they have uh, 30 dimes on them, each one of them, uh, the betrayals payment, 30 pieces of silver. And they have to figure out who's killing these people and why. And on top of all of that, uh, we have this new burgeoning relationship between Detective Vera Lee and Detective Harriet Foster and how that's going to come together. And also the fact that she's also dealing with whatever situation she came into this series with. Uh, and her journey continues. So we have the team still there. Uh, we have a new case for them to solve. We have these relationships that I'm sort of trying to gel together and have them sort of come to some kind of uh, agreement between all of them. And all of those sort of uh, balls are, are juggling at the same time. So complicated and also complicating. And the more I can give them to sort of deal with, I have given them. And hopefully the readers will find it an engaging read. And physically, she's got some uh, more things to deal with after the conclusion, because, you know, there's always a, a big scene at the end of a book like this. Um, so <laughs> d- how how far past that in the timeline is she in the second book? Well, not so far. Uh, I don't like to age it too much. So I think we are maybe a month out. Okay. So she's, you know, she's healing. She's doing all right. Uh, her partner's doing OK. And, uh, you know, they're ready to get back in there. And it is time for our final break of this episode. When we come back, Tracy will be talking about just what it is about crime fiction that draws her to writing within the genre. So stay tuned. You're listening to GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast, the show that gives you advice on everything travel. We explore places you've always wanted to go, as well as giving tips for traveling in those places. We'll give you advice on the best sites for travel tips, information, and discounts. Join us as we travel the world, explore cultures, and meet new people. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast has got you covered. Download the GSMC Travel Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author Tracy Clark. What do you think it is about crime fiction that draws you to writing within the genre? I don't know, really. I think it may be the puzzle part of it. Um, I like to understand why things are. Um, And when I started writing, I wanted to write books or stories that sort of explained why things are. Why are people bad? Why do bad things happen? Um, what can we do to solve whatever that is? There's got to be a solution somewhere to this thing. And I think crime stories are the perfect avenue to sort of explore those kinds of things. You have a situation. You've got a problem. Somebody has taken the ultimate uh, thing from person, a person, their life. Uh, why is that? 
what propelled them to do that? Uh, what can be, what can we as a society do to sort of stop that from happening? And I don't think we can. It's human nature. Human people kill for human reasons. Um, but I wanted to sort of look at that, um, in the sense of a crime novel or a novel in any kind, uh, to just figure out what is going on. What can we do? Why are we this way? Um, so I think that was the motivation for me. And also the fact that I had this wonderful, uh, body of work from these wonderful female crime writers that to sort of look at uh, Sarah Peretsky and Valerie Wilson Wesley and all of these Ellen, you know, Eleanor Taylor Bland, who is local to me here. Um, but the wonderful writers who are exploring the same kinds of questions. And I wanted to sort of do what they did and uh, hopefully get to a point where I could be just as good as them. Sure. Makes sense. And what are you working on now? Are you working on another Harriet book? Or are you working on another cast book? Both. Um, I'm working on another Harriet book on three in the series. I don't have a title for it yet. I'm uh, probably maybe pretty far along. Um, and in this one, um, again, a different case, same team. Uh, Harriet's still on her journey. Uh, she's learning a little bit more about herself. She's not as quite as isolated as she was in Hyde, which is good. Um, so she's making some progress. She's not quite there. Uh, she's getting along gangbusters with her new partner. That's wonderful. And then they have this new challenge that they have to deal with. So uh, same team, same city, same gritty uh, Chicago streets, different case. And, you know, you mentioned um, isolation when you were talking about Harriet. Mm-hmm. And that just m- made me think. I, I recognized the, the hide as a title was in reference to the way the bodies were being hidden. But did you also kind of mean it as a reference to Harriet? And she is kind of hiding from a lot of parts of her life right now. Absolutely. And in fact, uh, the title for fall it has the same thing, the same dual thing. So yes, it was very much uh, in my mind when I came up with the title, because Harriet is absolutely hiding. She's hiding from her life. She's hiding from everything. Um, as I said, she's great on the job. Off of it, not so great. Um, and so she's got to figure out how to how to how to write herself. Yeah, absolutely. How about you when you're not um, researching or writing? Uh, it, you know, I'm sure you have scads of spare time, but when you're, when you're <laughs> reading for yourself, what have you been reading? Well, I'm reading two books now because that's my sort of uh, relaxation time. I mean, I'm writing most of the morning. I've got my day time still, so I sort of swivel over and do that. And in the evening when my brain is fried, I like to read because I'm primarily a reader uh, who turned into a writer. And so I'm currently reading at this point uh, Anne Cleves' uh, The Rising Tide, uh, Vera Stanhope. I love Vera Stanhope. I'm sorry, I'm reading that, but I'm also reading uh, All the Sinners Bleed by uh, S.A. Cosby. So I'm reading two books at the same time. Uh, one night I will do one chapter or a couple of chapters of one and then switch over to the next the next day. Uh, and so that's, that's how I read. So I one or two books going at the same time, um, switch over if I have to, and I enjoy it immensely. So those two books are great, uh, very expertly written, uh, wonderful writers both, and the stories are fascinating. So um, those are the two books that I'm reading right now. All right. Thank you. Um, internet, where can people find you on the internet? A uh, website, if you have one, and then any social media that you're active on. Well, uh, my website is tracyclarkbooks.com. Uh, so check me out there. I'm also on Twitter or X, whatever they want to call it today, uh, at, at tracypc6161. Uh, Facebook, uh, T. Clark Books. And on uh, Instagram, uh, TP Clark. 2000 to zero zero zero. So uh, check me out. I'm usually up there wasting time when I should be writing and uh, drop me a line or something. I feel like I'm never going to call X X. I just call it Twitter because <laughs> it's just the weirdest thing. My brain. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like the artist formerly known as Prince. I can't, I just got yeah, I, a, I still get, Twitter. Uh, I can't get with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tracy, is there anything that we haven't talked about during this time that you were hoping to highlight? Um, no, I think I'm, I'm good. I mean, you know, I have very little, very few secrets here. I'm just a writer. Um, just punching it out every day. That's all I do. Uh, and then I sort of uh, scout the city to see where I can drop a body. So, you know, that's my weird kind of person that way. So you got me in a nutshell. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to talk to me. Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting me. So once again, thank you to Tracy for coming back to the podcast to talk about a new series. As I said at the beginning, I really enjoyed this. I, uh, I enjoyed the, the mystery. I'm, I had, 
I think I figured out parts of it and other things were still a surprise, so that's always good. But uh, as I said, I'm really in it for Harriet and even and some of the secondary characters as well. I really like Vera. I am intrigued about a couple others as well. Again, I don't want to give too much away, but that first partner, I'm interested to see if he gets an arc. So I will be tuning in to learn more about these characters, but really want to stick with Harriet, and I'm I'm rooting for her. I know she's fictional, but you got to root for even your fictional characters, right? So if you're a fan of crime fiction, and if you're a fan of female leads in the detective role, there's actually um, multiple female strong female characters in this. There's Harriet, of course. There's uh, Detective Vera Lee, her partner through part of the book. There is their police captain. I cannot remember her name off the top of my head. It's there. And then the Emmy is also a woman. So there are four really strong female characters within this story. And so I like that and just getting different perspectives from uh, your maybe your more quote-unquote typical police, procedural, crime fiction, mystery, etc. So if you are interested, you should definitely check this out. As I said, the first episode was episode 317. So if you want to know more about the Cass Reigns series and that lead character who is a PI, then you should definitely go listen to that interview as well. Next episode, I hope you will join me for, of course, I always hope that, but next episode I will be speaking with author Elizabeth Schick about her debut novel. It is called The Golden Land. It is um, inspired by the five or six years she and her family lived in Myanmar. It takes place between um, Burma, it was Burma up until 1989, I think she said, and then it was Myanmar. So Burma slash Myanmar and Boston goes back and forth. It goes back and forth between 1988 and 2011. I had a great conversation with Elizabeth, so I hope you will join me for that episode on Friday. That is an extra episode this week, which reminds me to remind you that if you are not following, like, subscribe, etc. on the podcast platform on which you listen to this podcast, you should do that because then you'll always know when there are new episodes available and out, like when we have an extra episode in a week. Also, a review is great. Please leave reviews for your favorite authors. Um, that helps them so much to get their books out. I speak to a lot of um, debut authors on this podcast. I speak to a lot of authors who maybe aren't as well known as some of the larger uh, authors, and a review can help them so, so much get their book out to more people. So review their books. Review this podcast. It doesn't take much time, and it's something that you can do to help some creators in the world to get their their works of I was going to say their works of creation, <laughs> but to get their get their works out there, whether that's a podcast or a book or what have you. Also, you can follow the podcast on social media, as you hopefully know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Please come find me. Please come talk to me on the book review social media. I love hearing from you and hearing what you're reading and what you want to read next, etc. So please follow on social media. In the meantime, I hope that your week is off to a resounding start. I hope that wherever you are, you are safe. You are not in extreme weather. Um, or, yeah, I just, I, I hope you're doing well. And regardless of what is going on, as long as you are safe, I hope that your week gives you plenty of time to get yourself lost in lots of good books. Because the world is a little bit crazy, right? So go find yourself a good book and just get yourself lost in it. Talk to you on Friday. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.